GTA 5 sure pushed the envelope when it came to what was achievable within a GTA game, ranging from trivial features like realistic body collision, multi-factored movement like slope tolerance, tissue behavior, all the way to more complex structures, like a completely overhauled brand new euphoric physics engine. It was fair to say that in 2013, players were a bit tired of the grey concrete jungle of Liberty City in GTA 4. It felt old, it was lacking green areas, realistic weapon behavior, and since weapons in GTA 4 could magically load another magazine by just racking the bolt of the gun, Gun Jesus would not be happy about that one. To even some complaining about the exaggerated, over-the-top, Hollywoodish ragdoll physics engine. However, it is part of human nature to complain about things until we actually lose them. You see, now multiple GTA fans look back at this old, riggedy, gray and depressing GTA and actually want the physics engine back. Going as far as comparing GTA 4 physics to GTA 5 physics, still to this day. So what happened? What made people so disappointed by this $300 million project when it came to update the physics in a GTA franchise? How could an engine with the same name differ so much between two games? Well, buckle up ladies and gentlemen. Against what many may believe, Rockstar didn't actually make the physics engine that you know from all the GTA games. Hell, going as far to be incorporated in the Max Payne and Red Dead Redemption franchises, they opted to base all their intellectual property, major titles, into a third-party engine, Euphoria. Now, Euphoria was created by a fellow British company, Natural Motion, created in 2001 by Torsten Rail. And real, I'm terrible with names, man. Just Stupid fuck. Their work wasn't even directed at games specifically, really, as they were funded by the Oxford University itself, as a division formerly known as the ISIS... Yes, ISIS. Innovation Limited. Okay, it was 2001, they couldn't possibly known, okay, just unfortunate decision, let's call it. With academic funds in mind, Natural Motion's initiative was motivated by the study of the human nervous system, pushing for simulations of movement caused by our very own neural system. Now, I think you're starting to finally connect the dots and understanding how this could possibly benefit animation in games and virtual environments. This provided an alternative to the typical motion capture technology that had its limitations at the time when it came to predictable movement. As you may very well be aware, motion capture doesn't really apply to when your character is run over by a truck in the in-game world. There has to be a piece of technology that runs in real time to simulate impact and proper reaction to such event. But for a long time, this predictable movement in dynamic situations was the norm in gaming. It goes without saying that 2001 was quite early to implement such a complex system when most games were just starting to adapt to the 3D world. The GTA franchise was barely just coming off the top view style of gameplay as they released GTA 3 in 2002, the first game in a 3D GTA universe for Rockstar Games. And for the foreseeable years, they focused in cementing the brand of GTA games instead of wilding into unknown territory. That's why for all 3D titles in the GTA franchise, Franchise, like GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, there's not a single trace of ragdoll physics, as all animations were pre-rendered. This was a smart decision too, as even a company that was 100% focused in developing such a system like Natural Motion was, struggled to make it somewhat consistent. They developed Endorphin in the early 2000s, which is the predecessor to the Euphoria engine, calling it a dynamic motion synthesis software. It was in the mid-2000s where Natural Motion released their piece of resistance. Yeah, I know French too, motherfucker. Euphoria is born, and as a fat kid is attracted to candy, Rockstar Games swoop right in to get some of that sweet, sweet ragdoll physics. You see, GTA 4 was planned to be released in 2008, and Rockstar was on a hunt for a license for a real-time animation engine, as GTA 4 was going to be their entry into the HD universe for the GTA franchise. It would be weird to have this realistic-looking world where characters and NPCs still felt like they slipped on some bananas or something. It was a perfect opportunity 
to update and Rockstar didn't want to invest years into researching the perfect engine for this. It happens to be that they didn't even have to leave the British island to search for such a solution as their neighbor Natural Motion had exactly what they needed. Now, this license didn't mean Rockstar Games had exclusive rights to this engine. As some of you may be aware, Star Wars Force Unleashed 2 is a game where the physics engine seems oddly familiar. And you'd be correct because the engine in Star Wars Force Unleashed 2 also uses the Euphoria framework. But what this license would essentially mean is that Rockstar would have free range in adapting the engine to fit their needs and create a unique brand within their intellectual property. Essentially, Rockstar could modify the Euphoria engine with the tools given by Natural Motion as much as they wanted, as long as they didn't sell it as a dedicated intellectual property, but instead be applied into their actual intellectual property, which would be the case for GTA 4. We all remember our first times, right? Our first time eating all by ourselves. The first time playing a game without tutorials. First time jamming our f But surprisingly for Rockstar Games, their first time using a Dynamics physics engine actually ended up being quite fucking epic, actually. <laughs> GTA 4 absolutely amazed even the most skeptical of fans. The leap in technology was astonishing. And even though there's a troubling amount of people that don't place GTA 4 even in their top five, this game was one of the most groundbreaking GTAs of all time. Not only for the fact that it was a flagship game for the HD universe, but also for its innovative features, like throwable 3D objects, car physics, which we will we'll get into that in a bit, and of course its free-flowing physics engine. Not only their first attempt was a hit, it became one of the most praised physics engine in the gaming world. Even years after release, GTA 4's Euphoria was able to bring a level of realism that we never seen previously in any GTA. In GTA 4, NPCs would be able to recognize grabbable objects, objects they could grab, uneven surfaces, and even react to injuries. Firstly, I would like to mention that one of the best examples of this realistic behavior in GTA 4 and the engine itself would be the small scale collisions, as they would actually play out accordingly to its scale. Meaning, if an NPC was constantly getting bumped by our psycho intern Nico Pellic, they wouldn't fall to the ground and stay under the car as if their knees were made of jello you know, making them accept their new reality as a doormat. No, no, they, they actually kept a hand on the hood of the car and kept themselves on their feet as some, some sort of defensive reflex. This sort of cushion that they would create with their hand in the hood of the car is something that many of us would do upon this sociopathic <laughs> behavior. The engine actually seeks out anchor points for the NPC to make contact with the object that is about to collide with them. Meaning the engine had to account for situations where collision is not currently being applied, but it will at some point, which we call this adaptive behavior. This is ridiculously advanced, as many games even today in 2024 don't have any of this. You'll even see the NPCs actually muster up some sort of effort in raising their arms to maintain balance. This is specifically called procedural animation and is also done beautifully and something mostly unseen in games at this time. On top of that, the Euphoria engine would also recognize damage input and make the NPCs sort of like press their wounds to stop a bleeding, which again, very realistic behavior. Now granted, the engine had its fair share of comedic side to it, as NPCs would awkwardly try to flip over a railing if one was in an immediate approximate distance, even if that railing would be a little bit too tall and create this weird dance of death where NPCs look like they're being possessed by the devil. It's fair to assume Rockstar implemented this for dramatic effect, but it sure entertained fans nonetheless. As still today, players have fun recreating this behavior. And I have to say the Euphoria engine is what makes this game such a fun game in terms of gunplay. NPCs don't instantly fall into the ground as if they just got shot with a tranquilizing dart, but instead they will still try to keep shooting while obviously injured and weak, but still on their feet. Unless you shoot their asses with a 12 gauge, which even in real life, nobody's gonna handle that shit. <laughs> Pair that with a hilarious situation of NPCs actually grabbing, like full five fingers grabbing on a car door handle when you piss them off or you rob them. 
It's just hilarious. I always like to think those were sentient NPCs that really worked their asses off to get that car, only for Nico to just steal their shit. <laughs> dead or they got their sleeves stuck to the car. Being as it may, it's fun. Players absolutely love this and they still do. One of the most downloaded mods at the time, when the PC version was actually released, very poorly I might add, was a simple script that binded the H key to the ragdoll button on demand. Modded maps were created, which merely consisted of ramps that spiral down the Rotterdam Tower, and it would also be mods that would allow us to understand that the Euphoria engine was actually more complex than it even shown at surface level, as our character Nico could actually force a specific behavior of ragdoll, like tucking and rolling, or even just landing stiff as if he just got tased. But as I initially mentioned, the Euphoria engine is not static to a single version, and to some, it suffered a sort of downgrade in the GTA universe. After its debut in GTA 4, the Euphoria engine went through multiple integrations. As I said in the beginning, Natural Motion gave Rockstar a toolset and framework to adapt the engine in any way they desired. In Max Payne 3, the differences were surely there, but very minimal when compared to GTA 4. And considering the cinematic nature of Max Payne 3, it was a perfect fit for some badass cinematic moments during gameplay. Hence the decision for Rockstar to not fix what's not broken. However, they did have a different approach to their new GTA installment, GTA 5. Although GTA 5 was not intended to break ground in the regards of jumping into a new universe, Rockstar still wanted to make a splash with this HD title. Breaking a staggering budget record of $300 million, GTA 5 was going to be their most ambitious project ever. And for any effect, it didn't disappoint, both financially as it scored $800 million in the first 24 hours, and critically as players named it the game of the decade. But again, people are very prone to not value what's old or outdated until they lose it. And even though players got three playable characters, more map space, the return of the great state of San Andreas, people were not happy about that physics engine. Going as far to miss the one present in GTA 4, a game that came out almost five years back. This new Euphoria version seemed to be summarizing the word um, pathetic or even not impactful at all. NPCs would now fall instinctively as soon as they got a leaf landing on their head. Sometimes at even very low energy collisions, they seemed to suffer a brain freeze when they got shot or hit with anything and instantly fall to the ground when pushed by cars. One of the main differences in GTA 5 that I was able to observe at least was the fact that anchor points like feet and hands no longer adapted to the current predicament. That adaptive behavior was just not in the game anymore. NPCs no longer try to replant their feet when they were being pushed by something and grabbing was reduced to a very sporadic and very non-practical application. NPCs also seemed to lose the feature of grabbing their wounds when they got shot and honestly, in a personal opinion, it was straight up not fun to shoot anything. There's no impact gunplay. It feels like these NPCs have no sense of self-perseverance. And they don't try to shoot while wounded anymore. Unless they are actually stuck in the pre-rendered animation, as if this shit was 2004 all over again. A lot of people were upset, that's what I'm saying. It felt like it was a retrograde of one of the most fun and hilarious physics engine in the market. And believe it or not, there's a good indication that Rockstar Games noticed that and felt the same way. I say Rockstar Games felt the disappointment for their new engine, because for their prequel installment of Red Dead Redemption 2 in 2018, they actually overhauled the Euphoria engine once again. However, this time Rockstar Games actually did something that fills my heart with pride. They actually found a compromise. You see, they got a fair share of criticism for their stiff and static Euphoria in GTA 5. And they also got a fair share of positive feedback for their older title GTA 4, albeit with some cons to consider. And so Rockstar Games' neurons of common sense fired up and decided to mix the best of both worlds. If GTA 5 was described as a game with no impact on collisions, 
then the solution was to recycle the adaptive behaviors seen in GTA 4. And so anchor points were made great again, as NPCs now reacted to oncoming collisions. Gunshots actually felt they had an impact, and NPCs started reacting accordingly to the type of injury they endured. But this time with less dramatic flair, as pressing a wound is not always realistic mid-combat, contrary to what we saw in GTA 4. For shooting NPCs near railings, Rockstar chose to keep the dramatic nuance to give that cinematic feel of a western movie. And to hand combat felt enjoyable again, and you could actually feel the manly punches of Arthur Morgan. As NPCs got knocked out, you could see their consciousness slowly fading away, and the actual weight of bodies impacting the ground. In another hand, the silly waddling that we saw in GTA 4 was kept on check, as NPCs don't look like they got shot by bullets made of liquor anymore, which to a lot of people, myself included, made Red Dead Redemption 2 the perfect love child between GTA 4 and GTA 5's Euphoria. Shooting in Red Dead Redemption 2 is extremely addictive due to Euphoria's punchy and natural feel. Jumping out of great heights, running NPCs over with horses, punching them. When you have such a simple but dumb way to have joy, then that's how you know you hit peak performance with your engine. Even if Red Dead Redemption 2 was not perfect itself, as you can still drag NPCs like they're beach balls or something, it's natural to have this compromise. You have to have this compromise to please the vast majority of players. It is important to discuss some misconceptions. What we talked about in this video was mainly the physics engine. Do not confuse this with the actual game engine, Rage, which stands for Rockstar Advanced Game Engine. Think of Rage as an aggregator of everything that makes the game animated. Everything from elemental engines like Euphoria to optimization. For example, when we talk about the god-awful port of GTA 4 for the PC, we talk about a mishap in the use of Rage. Weather effects, driving physics, cutscene triggers, everything is part of this mother load of an engine. So for GTA 6, it is mostly guaranteed that Rage will be the heart of the new installment. However, there's a misconception floating around that once Euphoria is used and integrated into Rage, that it will always be part of Rockstar's advanced engine and will be part of every game that Rockstar wishes. And this is where you gotta pump your brakes. Remember that I said Euphoria is a license-based engine. Meaning this license can get expired at any given point or even extinguished since natural motion is the actual creator and rights holder of its intellectual property. As quick as they create it, as quick as they can kill it. Nothing guarantees the integration of the same euphoria for GTA 6. Now, realistically, there's nothing to indicate that natural motion wouldn't like to keep the license to one of the, if not the, most popular game developer in the world. But it's possible for GTA 6 to incorporate a completely homemade engine, or even another product and engine developed by natural motion, or even another software from any other company. Injecting it into Rage doesn't make it theirs, and there's always room for change here. And I suppose that's our only given guarantee that there's always room to improve, regardless if they go with Euphoria or not. So whatever engine Rockstar decides to give it a go, they have a long-standing track record of turning a rock into a diamond. So don't be concerned about possible change. The evolution of the Euphoria engine it will always be a hot topic as it will always depend on what every player feels like it should happen when an NPC is hit in some form or another. To some, realistic behavior is more fun, to others, goofy behavior actually suits the GTA franchise more adequately. But using Red Dead Redemption 2 as a recent example, it seems like Rockstar is now giving a chance to compromise, and that will piss off both sides of the fence but it will also please both sides of the fence. The beautiful thing about it all is that the Euphoria engine is so powerful and adaptable that a compromise will never mean a half-assed physics engine. So if you ever think Rockstar is lazy for using an already made engine from a company that does mobile games now, understand Euphoria would be nothing that we see today without Rockstar. As we've seen, the company can create two completely different versions and somehow still not fail completely. Because even if if you consider GTA 5's version as a downgrade, it still kicks ass to most games out there. So 
too long, didn't read, Rockstar knows how to make their shit. <laughs> Simple as that.